The last night of my junior year in high school, when I was 16 years old, I put an end to my father's beating me with a garden hose. He'd escalated to this weapon for his wholly unjustified punishments some years earlier. When he brought that hose whooshing down on my backside, the purple welts that rose in my flesh hurt deeply for days after. On the night in question, as I made my way through the darkened house toward the room I shared with my brother, I sensed my father's presence before in the dim light discerning him with that hose in hand. He ordered me to lie down on the bed, as I'd always done, but it suddenly came to me that I didn't have to take this any longer. My refusal triggered a struggle in which he tried to force me down. I responded by wrapping my arms around his neck and lifting my feet from the floor so that I hung dead weight down the front of his body, absorbing all his energy. Within seconds, he went limp with exhaustion. I took my arms from around his neck and stepped back. Three decades later, in nonviolence training for my first civil disobedience at Rocky Flats, we did a role play called Deadweight, in which you contain someone's belligerent behavior by hanging yourself deadweight down that person's torso. Tears burst from my eyes. Amazingly, what I'd done spontaneously at age 16 was being taught in carefully designed nonviolence training. My father, I realized, without knowing that he was doing so, had made a great gift to me, for he had planted within me the seed of nonviolence. An eventual fruit of nonviolent resistance by many was ending production at Rocky Flats of nuclear bombs, the extremity of violence. <laughs>